Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello, listeners. This is your host today again, Andy Curry, and I am here on the line with David Rolander, who has been speaking for an amazing 30 years. The content David speaks on is communication. David speaks in the U.S. and internationally. He is based out of California. He has written two books. One is called The CEO Code. The other one is called Management Skills, which is a series for the Idiot's Guide. David, welcome to the program. Well, thank you, Andy. Nice to be with you. Nice to have you here with us. I wanted to uh, clarify something for listeners. When we talked about your book, The CEO Code, it is a play on words. Would you tell the listeners what that play on words is? Sure, I'd be happy to, Andy. The the target market for the CEO Code is obviously CEOs, chief executive officers and executives. And um, the play on words is that the C is about communications, the E is execution, and the O is operations. In fact, the first five chapters are all about communication. My definition of that is effective communication requires more than talent. It involves trust, respect, understanding, empathy, and resolution. It is an art. And so the first chapter is all about trust, the second about respect, etc., understanding, empathy, and resolution. And then in execution, those five chapters talk about how to actually get things done. And then the last five chapters on operations go into everything from how to reward people, how to hire people, how to make sure that your computer systems and Internet and uh, all of your IT and information technology is current, up to date, and uh, all that type of thing. Okay. Practical thing. Very okay. practical. Fantastic. Very practical. Thank you. Now, let's talk about your speaking business, first of all. Your content is uh, primarily based around communication, as we talked about before the start of the interview. And you're also doing on leadership and uh, one other topic, which was? Finance. Finance, okay. And But centering around communication, so what is it that you are – teaching people that you speak to, and, and who is it that you are speaking to? What types of groups of people? Uh, I speak to all kinds of uh, associations, uh, companies, organizations. If you look at my website, everything from uh, accounting firms like Ernst & Young or Deloitte and to engineering firms and aerospace firms, um, you know, many, many different organizations. And as I've done that over the years, and I've been in the business like you, like you indicated, over 30 years, what I find is that over and over and over again, two fundamental problems come up with companies, with relationships, and um, with uh, just individuals. And they are, number one, communication and poor communication, not knowing how to effectively communicate with other people. And the other is money. Uh, not enough money, as Jim Rohn used to say, who's no longer with us, too much month at the end of the money. Uh, so I started my career um, with an MBA in finance and working with Merrill Lynch for almost 10 years and then real estate developing. I was very much into the money game, if you will, and, and fortunately did very, very well. And then I retired when I was 40. And as I was thinking about what I had done and then uh, interest rates changed and I had to go back to work and, and I deliberately chose rather than go back into the money business, how to make money, how to create money, how to help people with their money and all that. The real problem that I saw over and over again was the people didn't communicate effectively. So those two areas have kind of been my theme in many, many years, communication and money. Communication is huge. That's, that's the very, one of the very things that breaks up marriages, friendships, kills sure. businesses. What do you find is the top uh, one or two problems with communication Why or miscommunication, why that happens? Well, I think it, it's really, uh, I'm, I, I'm sure you and all your listeners are going to say, of course, as soon as I say this, but the biggest problem most people have with communications is they don't listen or they don't know how to effectively listen. And uh, they have a tendency to 
focus on their own agenda as opposed to being comfortable enough with themselves so that they can really focus on the other person and uh, and really listen, listen at multiple levels. You know, the, the old saying that you have two eyes, uh, two ears and one mouth. And so use your your eyes and your ears more than you use your mouth. Um, if you think of politicians, they they talk a lot. They uh, give speeches and they talk a lot. But how much do they really listen? Uh, in a marriage, how much real emotional listening goes on? Without that, it, it causes all kinds of problems. With teenagers, the same thing. Oh, huge, yeah. Well... I bet you struck a chord with the listeners on the politicians that that there's a can of worms you just opened. Yeah. Um. Okay. So listening is is the number one problem. Are you teaching people uh, skills and how to listen? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. In fact, the biggest chapter in the book, the CEO Code, and it's all through the other book, Management Skills, is all about understanding other people. See, when to it's um. Well, I don't want to get too too much in the weeds here, but if there's a fellow that was a professor at UCLA called Albert Morabian, and he did a study many, many years ago about likability, and uh, a lot of people have quoted that study and misrepresented the intent of it, but the core was likability, and they say it's basic communications. Now, there is a high correlation between the two, but his study was a little different than just raw communications. And what he found was uh, that the words you use are a very small part of the communication. Words are, in, in, and a good illustration of that is you, you and I are talking on the phone, so you're hearing words, or if we did an email or a text, there would be words. But the reality of effective communication is much more than just the words. It takes tone of voice. It takes your expression, the cadence, and all those things. Um, like some some people are accused of being low energy and not motivated. And the reason some people perceive that is because, well, they talk kind of, you know, slow and deliberate, and they are not really high energy or right. excited. So tone is a big part of it. And then all of the different aspects of body language need to be taken into consideration uh, when you're listening and when you're communicating. So the center, the third chapter is all about understanding. We go into body language, we go into NLP, which is neurolinguistic programming, we go into behavioral styles and psychology, we go into emotional intelligence, we go into perception, we go into backgrounds, we go into uh, a person's experience. The reality is everybody has had a different life experience, and unless you really understand their life experience, you're probably not going to understand what they're what they're really trying to communicate. So it gets pretty complex, but it's um, it's very it's very rewarding when you attack it and really learn how to uh, perceive, be aware of the nuances. And uh, my next book, in fact, is going to be about pattern recognition and how important it is to identify patterns for solving problems, for communicating, and all the like. Go into that a little bit. That sounds interesting. Can you give us a, a, a taste of what you mean by that? Sure, sure. Uh, well, if you think about it, uh, everything in life has patterns. Uh, I'm sitting in my office looking outside, and I see uh, some beautiful uh, white birch trees, European white birch trees. And then up on the hill, there are pine pine trees. Well, they're different types of leaves, right? The pine trees have needles, and the white birch have broad, broad leaves. Very, very different. They're designed to produce different things. The, the broad leaf falls off. The pine needles stay on. Well, if you really look at bot botany, which we don't want to get into, but if you look at the design of plants and why they're structured the way they are, just like going all the way back to Darwin and even before that, the body kind of adapts, things we adapt. People will adapt to their patterns. Um, and, and the more you can identify those patterns, uh, it's just like uh, the, one of the, my favorite examples is thinking of a, I, when I was a young kid, I was really into cowboy movies and cowboys and boys, cowboys and Indians and all that kind of stuff. And I always admired the Indian ability, the Indians that uh, were characterized in the, the books that I read and the shows that I saw 
were incredibly aware of what was going on. They could hear noises that the cowboy was not even aware was there. They could see things. They could smell things. They were more in tune with nature, which enabled them to be much more perceptive than, quote, the cowboy. Um, and, and communication is like that, and patterns are like that. So the more you know about botany, the more you're going to be able to understand when a tree is healthy or not healthy and why it grows a certain way. The more you understand about how people behave, you can study their behavior and from just their f- facial expression. You know, Abraham Lincoln famously said that he's never met anybody over 40 that didn't earn their face. Um, so you earn your face by the way you behave and your facial expressions reveal an incredible amount about who you are, what you're thinking. And, uh, it's impossible, absolutely impossible not to communicate. You don't have to say anything. You can just sit there, but you're still communicating if you have someone with you that is perceptive. So, uh, identifying all of the patterns it goes all the way. Part of what we're going to talk about in the book is going back to Einstein. Um, and what Einstein did was he thought in pictures a lot and he, and he thought for years and years and years, and he tried to see the patterns of the planets and the way the universe was working and the way, the way things happened. And ultimately without getting into it too much, he became uh, in, incredibly successful when he came up with E equals MC squared. He identified that it all relates and he was able to come up with a simple formula that identified what was going on with matter and with energy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the same with communication. There's, there's that, it's like when you go to the doctor's office and they ask you all these questions and they do all these exams and all these tests and they're looking for that, what are the telltale, time, or the telltale signs that are critical. Uh, sometimes the blood pressure is a critical indicator. Sometimes it's not. Uh, they talk about seeing yellow, yellow jaundice, and you, you can just, if you're a doctor, you just see that. If you're not a doctor, you might just think that they've been in the sun or not in the sun or it's something going on like that. So there's so many things like that that that's so critical uh, for us to effectively work with other people. And, you know, no man is an island. We all have to work with other people. So the more effectively we can do that, potentially the more successful we will be fascinating i i have a friend who has a boss that's um apparently quite moody and uh she says she can tell by the way he says good morning in the morning if it's if she if it's okay to talk to him or if uh, if it's not <laughs> sure well, yeah. and see, a lot of that we we relate to each other, and not not even uh, we're not even aware of it. I'm sure you're aware that that uh, an office of women they will their cycle will get in sync with each other, and they're not deliberately trying to do that. It's just the way the way it works, um, and and so we really are unaware. Most people are just unaware of the energy and the spiritual dimension of communication, how important it is and, and how much we uh, affect other people. We radiate energy. We, you, you know, there are all kinds of tests that you can do where you can actually see the energy pattern that you are radiating uh, in electrical energy we're talking about here. Mm-hmm. And we, we radiate that to other people. So when someone walks in the room and they captivate the room, a big part of it is because they are radiating that energy that just makes them magnetic. Now, do you? That's interesting to me. Do you do you talk to folks about how to increase that radiation? Oh yeah, and at the core of it is to get your own battery working right or your own machine working right. The core of it is, uh, you know, if it's to be, it's up to me. You have to work on yourself. Um, uh, a fun, a fun little story I heard many years ago down in Texas was uh, build a better world, said God. And I said, well, what can I do? This is such a vast and complex place. I don't know what to do. And this, you know what? It's too complex. And God, in all his wisdom, said, Dave, you just build a better you. And so that's where it all starts. Working on yourself. Really understanding why you behave the way you do and how to modify and change. That's what the essence of emotional intelligence, which uh, over the last 20 years or so we've discovered is incredibly important for success in a career, 
And the essence of emotional intelligence is being able to understand and manage not only your own emotions, but the emotions of others. That phrase you said a minute ago, understand why you do what you do. Do you have a uh, a technique you can give the listeners to take a um, look at that? Yeah, sure. Uh, there, well, there are a lot of things that you can do. Um, a couple of ideas to play with. One, uh, take time to reflect. After every experience that you have, maybe you have an interview with a boss or you have a sales call or you go out to dinner with your spouse or you, ha- you ha- go out and have beer with the friends or whatever it is, develop the habit of taking time to reflect and ask yourself, how did I behave? What did I do well? What should I change? What could I improve? Why was I doing the, the the classic who, what, why, where, when, and how? Ask yourself those questions when you evaluate yourself. Now, Peter Drucker, a very famous management guru that is no longer with us, wrote 40-some books. I had the privilege of being a student for a while and getting to know him. Talked about and as an executive, what you need to do is you need to evaluate yourself on a regular basis. So it's a very deliberate Um, at least annually, but preferably quarterly, evaluate your behavior, evaluate your activities, evaluate the way you've been interfacing with people. And I'm not talking about just sitting and and doing it. I'm talking about actually sitting in isolation, taking time to evaluate yourself and writing down what were my goals? What was I trying to accomplish? What did I accomplish? What could I improve? What could I change? So that's self-inspection or self-reflection. That's critically important. Most people are so busy, busy, busy that they don't take time to think. And Schweitzer said it way back, Albert Schweitzer said it way back, uh, he said the biggest problem people have is they just don't think. So we need to think and reflect. That's one thing. The second thing you can do is you can ask other people. I started this way back by accident. I started this way back when I was a broker with Merrill Lynch. I asked my clients, my secretary, my boss, my sales manager, and other brokers, hey, what do I do well and what do I need to improve? And that can be done with just an envelope and a piece of paper, or you can do it online, but don't you won't get good results if people are able to see who said what, so you want to make it anonymous if possible. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, just ask, what are the three things that I do well? What are the three things I need to improve? And that's something you can do on a regular basis. And then you make that list and you look for patterns. You look for patterns as to what do people universally say is good and what do people universally say is bad? What's the pattern? Where are the most of them? You can throw away the one who's incredibly complimentary and says you're phenomenal, you're wonderful, you're beautiful, etc. That's that's irre- That's irrelevant. And you can throw away the ones that are radical, way off the wall, you're this, that, you know, you're negative, you're really a negative feedback. Throw this, throw the extremes away and look for the patterns in the middle. What do people see? What do other people see in you? And, and don't forget to thank them and don't forget to let them know what you intend to do about it. That's called feed forward. That's another thing you can do. If you want to change your behavior and improve a little bit, one of the things you can do is you can tell people, well, you know, I noticed I've been talking too much. And so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and become a better listener. Will you help me with that? If I interrupt or if I say too much, would you just kind of, you know, maybe raise your finger and say, up, oh, up, oh, you know, and help me do that. And let's see if I can get better. Okay. I appreciate the help. Thanks so much. What, what get a, them involved. I'm sorry. What, what a great uh, bunch of information. Thank you for that. Sure. Well, David, thank you so much for for giving us all the information. That that was definitely a brain load. And uh, if, people, <laughs> if people want to know more about you, to hear you speak, want to get more help and such, how do they do that? Well, they, I'm I'm all over the internet. Uh, the the only tricky part is the last name Rolander is Swedish and it's spelled differently. It's David Rolander R O H L A N D E R. My website is www.davidrolander.com. My cell phone number is on there. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter. The CEO's coach on Twitter. I'm just look up David Rolander on Google, and you'll have pages and pages of of information. And I'm happy to talk to anybody that calls. 
Okay. Well, David, thank you so much for for giving us all that information. Those are great techniques and tips, and um, I um, am looking forward to seeing what else you put out. I'd, I'd sure like to see you speak sometime. Are you ever coming to Colorado? Colorado? I have, uh, let me think, I, not recently. I haven't been there recently. I've got a cousin who lives in Lafayette. We've got a good excuse to come, but I I haven't uh, haven't been there lately. Okay, well... Your, your information is valuable, and I know the listeners will appreciate it. So thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you, Andy, very much. Y'all take care. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.